Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come alive. Good morning. We really did win. Put your hands together. Let me express my thanks to Brother Nichols and to Harbel and the organizers, of Brother Tim. And a big shout out for the nurses. Give it up for the nurses one more time. One more time for the nurses. We are here during this weekend with a, a sense of joy and get a sense of anxiety. The joy that our nation has come to grips with honoring the legacy of Dr. King with yet another national holiday. The fact that we converged neatly on the second inauguration of President Barack Obama. And so we had, uh, we have reason to celebrate that we were in a political battle in November between the Fort Sumter Tea Party forces and the President Barack Obama and Joe Biden. And we won the political battle. And while there's a crowd for shout and celebration, those who are there be change agents cannot settle even for but look at victory. The outside of the politics is the moral challenges that face us. Uh, when the conventions met in 1952 and ultimately Eisenhower was the victor in the election, the political battle was over. Among other things, he promised to bring troops home from Korea we still had to go to Little Rock on a question that was not on the agenda, opening up the schools. And Kennedy beat Nixon, Dr. King supported the Kennedy over Nixon. And the political season was over, but we still had to march on Washington for <coughs> public accommodations. Dr. King supported Johnson over Goldwater, and that was a great political victory over the right-wing ideologues of that day. We still had to go to Selma to fight for the Voting Rights Act. It's a way of saying that when the political battles are over, that it remains for us of the third rail. Um, the two parties, in the, at the end of the day, end up with some bipartisan kinship, the hug, make up, and go on down the road. For those of you who've been to Chicago, you know that there's a, a rail system. Uh, and if the tracks, if the train just stays on tracks one and two, the train just sits there. It's only when the third rail brings in the fire that the track, that the train move. We are the third rail. We are that which is not being discussed. If you, uh, if you, if you arrive safely at the, f and you stop the fiscal cliff, the rich people were not on the fifth fiscal, they were back up water with water breakers. They were not near the cliff in the first place. Um, in a real sense, if you go from fiscal cliff to, um, uh, to stop the debt, to deal with the debt ceiling, you still have not addressed with comprehensive single payer health care. <laughs> if you arrive at a bipartisan deal on the, um, on the fiscal cliff and the debt ceiling, you still Another address in a meaningful way, expanding poverty. 50 million Americans are in poverty. And, and that really means that they, are, that they can, can't get a bank loan. It means that they work harder and make less, pay more for less, live under stress and don't live as long. It means that they don't have a decent house off in the state. Many of them are veterans who are homeless. It means they give up the dream of their child ever going to college, for they work all of their days trying to quote unquote make ends meet. They are impoverished, and so for among them, infant mortality is higher and life expectancy is shorter. There's something called the, uh, this vast growing island of poverty amidst what Dr. King would call an ocean of prosperity. And so uh, quite apart from the fiscal cliff and the, and the debt ceiling is something called poverty. Johnson was smart enough, I might add, uh, to go to open up the war on poverty, if you will, 
a name we never hear very much these days, but opened up in Appalachia. By doing it, he deracialized the debate. If he had opened up Warren Park in Harlem or South South Chicago, it would have been dismissed for it got started. He took the hardest working, poorest folk in America, coal miners of the West of the Appalachian, and forced the nation to come to grips with something as, as significant, something called the poverty. Uh, we gave up that war on poverty and shifted the war on Vietnam. We must revive a war on poverty. The racial, racial disparities continue to grow. Uh, blacks and browns are still facing the very difficult challenge of patterns of racial discrimination, locking us out of access to education and to capital and to development, uh, or the ability to make a real contribution. We did not know how good baseball could be until everybody could play. We didn't know how good basketball could be until everybody could play. We don't know how good America can be until everybody can function. And that's another reason why I looked at uh, a film the other day of Johnson giving his civil rights address to the Congress in 1964, it must have been. It was almost all white males, one or two blacks, almost no women. It was looked like a 17th century textile show. And that was just 40 years ago. Look at how enriched it is because it is, does have women and, and lesbians and gays and because it has blacks, Latinos. We are a better nation today because we fought back and we have never given up. We will not give up. And lastly, this issue of, well, two is one of violence. Uh, it is uh, one thing to have a gun for your house, even though you're more likely to shoot a relative than a robber, <laughs> by the way. Uh, to have a gun to hunt, if that's your thing. But semi-automatic weapons have no place in a civilized society. <laughs> and if it's wrong to kill people in Chicago with them, it's wrong to kill people in Baghdad with them. We should stop killing people everywhere. If you stop the assault weapons in America, then stop the drones in Afghanistan. Stop killing people. I would say last time I'll talk this out in great detail with you, Brother Nichols, and others of you. We've got to go a step beyond. If we do all that we plan to do, they talk about the Chicago violence zone, where 506 were killed last year, and 175 were under age 18 before we got to Sandy Hook. Sam Hook touched us deeply because something about those babies being killed in mass, those babies that never had the chance to open their Christmas presents, never had the chance to see the Easter Bunny, as it were, or to see sunrise, something about that touched us in a different place. But it serves to illuminate other violence. The fact is 32,000 American Achilles, 32,000. We lost less than 6,000 in Iraq in 10 years, 32,000 a year are killed. 100,000 injured who did not die. We must, in fact, not give up on this, uh, the fight to end easy access to guns and magazines and do serious background checks. We should be as tough on the gun manufacturers as we are on the cigarette manufacturer. It just makes sense to me. <laughs> and I would say lastly, we're going to have a Rainbow Push Wall Street Summit Conference January 30th to February the 1st in, um, in New York City. Uh, there are huge amounts of our pension money uh, in creating gun manufacturers. Our money going to build casinos. Our money going to build skyscrapers for workers whose money it is cannot organize once they build the building. We must in fact build us not just an ordinary bank, we must build an infrastructure bank, an interest for development. Uh, we need long-term low interest loans. The banks that ripped us off, the banks that gave us predatory loans and subprime lending will not invest where the people live. We must build an infrastructure bank using the workers' money with government security. We talk about Wall, talk about Marshall Plan. Marshall Plan is simply this, 50-year loans at 2% government secured in infrastructure. We deserve to rebuild our infrastructure with the workers' money and put America back to work and end poverty as we know it. I'm glad to be with you today because you are my family. And we have work to do and really we have, it is now, there's no more anxiety about if we fight back
Will we embarrass the president? If we fight back, he won't win again. Well, he did win. We must not fight back. to give him a chance to really fight back. Because presidents are good, but marching makes them great because it gives them rights. Truman, all you really know about him is he desegregated the military because people fought back. What you really know about Eisenhower beside golf is that he integrated the schools in Little Rock. In Little Rock. What you really know about Kennedy is he chose Dr. King over George Wallace. You really know that Johnson, in the, in the real sense, chose the seven marches over those who stopped him. When, say when, when, say repeat when, when. we fight back. We fight when the progressives when. come alive, when. we make when. good presidents when. great. When. great. When. If we don't fight back, we betray our conscience and allow good presidents to drift to the right. When that happens, everybody loses and nobody wins. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who has been with us in struggle after struggle after struggle.